Yo, 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 what up, everybody? Welcome back to Mastermind Radio. I'm Ogun Neo. Yes, the one. Yes, I'm your host for this podcast as we deal with imagination, creation, into monetization. And we're going to give you a little word from our sponsors from Portland May Clothing, uh, where culture meets fashion and luxury meets the hood, where gods and goddesses can act in their divine nature and look fly while doing it. Yes, and for Marshmallow Honey Scrubs, with a busy hustle and bustle of life, you know, skin's care is more important than ever. So rejuvenate your skin, fellas. Go ahead and get your beards right. You know, we need some love and the, uh, you know, divine feminine aspect. So get your stuff right. You know what I mean? And Marathon Tactical with tactical training is a marathon. With civil unrest growing every day, it's important that the average civilian be prepared. So without further ado, we're going to get started on today's show. I like to say a realist, revolutionary salute to my soldiers out there. Peace to the gods and goddesses as we deal with today's topic. We're going to give you a little brief history and I'm going to dive in for all my revolutionaries out there. We're going to talk about how I got into the Black Rider Liberation Party. My first start, the things that transpired since then, the people who have left, the soldiers who are still here who hold in the line. Shout out to my riders on every front that's holding the line. Shout out to five-star General General Taco, our uh, Minister of Defense, National Minister of Defense, King Samir. You know what I mean? Shout out to all the riders out there in Texas, all the riders out in the UK, all the riders out in Seattle, all the riders out in Portland. You know what I mean? We making sure that y'all holding it down. We, we y'all, y'all doing great, especially out in Las Vegas. Y'all see y'all putting it down. Shout out to Buck down there. You know what I mean? In the fleet DJs. You know what I mean? They doing their thing. So I give y'all a brief history, and we are gonna dive into some uh, some guerrilla tactics, some guerrilla warfare. We're going to talk about how, why people sign up to be a revolutionary, what that looks like for them, um, because there's different aspects of different reasons why people sign up to be a revolutionary, you know, and we have to be very cautious and cognitive on why they signing up because, you know, in the back in the day, they said one out of every five Panthers was an informant. One out of every three was an informant. So we got to understand that even back then, they wasn't dealing with the things that we're dealing with today. They didn't have the internet. They didn't have, you know the things that, that could speed up and make the process to have oppression and feel repression so fast. You know what I mean? So again, um, this all started for me um, some years back. You've been in this about six years. Excuse me. Uh, you know, I'm drinking my green juice because we just recently went uh, vegetarian in our house. We're trying to make sure we get it right. So salute and applause for that. We love that. We appreciate that. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, uh, it was a situation that happened that a young woman was killed, uh, Irvea, Irvea Herring. And um, that situation was uh, kind of detrimental to my progression and start into becoming a black rider, right? So when she was killed and brutally slain, she was pregnant. And um, it was just some street tribal activity that spilled over into her household. And... Um, you know, I, I understood that at, that at that particular moment that our young men didn't have any kind of guidance in the streets and it was getting a little bit out of hand. So we had to provide a different outlook and a different thing for them to look at and, and to gravitate towards, you know, because young men is tribal. They want a sense of belonging. They want something that they can belong to a sense of family and so, and so forth. And we come from warriors aspect anyway. So what that means is that, you know, a lot of times out of 10, we're going to want to pick up some some form of a weapon. We want to learn combat training. We want to learn a lot of things that's going to be make us feel, you know, like men, because a lot of men don't know how to be men. You know, and that's the thing is a lot of men don't know how to be men. And they're actually boys, you know, and a lot of things that boys do, men don't do. Men don't respect. So we want to talk about respect is that when you get a man and you're dealing with the, the hormones, hormones is just going to give you instruction and direction for your DNA on whether or not you're going to be a soldier. You're going to be somebody that's going to be passive. So everything that you're eating, things that you're consuming, the things that you're watching and you're viewing is all going to have a part of your life because your environment creates your character. Your environment creates your character and whatever your environment in is going to be very detrimental to the type of person that you're going to be. So I'll tell you one thing that it always took crazy to me is that um, I get most of my game from women. Right. And it was a prostitute that told me that whatever you are, you were birth. If you are a felon, you were birth a felon. 
If you are a prostitute, you're a birth of prostitute, you know, because these these DNA is carried down. And then you're also got to pay attention to the kind of environment that you are brought into. It's going to dictate your character. You know, now you can look at that as an adversity and it can build you into a righteous person because you just a other if you don't have that B and an R in front of it. You know what I'm saying? Again, if you don't have that black and that righteousness in front of you, you just the other. Because at the end of the day, you'll be working for the opposition. You'll be working for what is our open enemy. You know, so unless you have that in front of it, you, you won't you won't be progressive in life. So again, she was brutally slain. And I knew that our young men needed to have another out another outlook, something that they can have a visual to see and say, I want to be a part of that. And you're gonna get education. You can still play with firearms, you know what I mean? But we're gonna teach you the right way of how to do it. So we're going to step inside of the, the, the world, the underlife, you know what I mean? The underworld, the dark world that people don't want to step into so that we can grab our babies and get them out of there and get them into the righteousness that they need to be in so they can act in their divine godly manner. Because at the end of the day, you know that a devil is going to be a devil. It's an open devil. You know that a snake is going to be a snake because that's in his nature to bite you. That's what's in his nature. You don't expect the lion to be a dog. You don't expect the dog to be a giraffe. You expect the giraffe to do what's in its nature. You expect the lion to do what's in its nature. That's why we don't fool with them. You know what I'm saying? You jump into a, a shark infested water, you know what's going to happen because you know that you, their nature is probably going to be the end of your life. So if you are a God and you are acting in your divine manner, then you are moving accordingly to what God wants you to be. If you are built in his image, now, if you are acting beneath your nature, then you are worse than the devil that is expected to act within his nature because you know that you are God, or maybe you just don't know. And ignorance is bliss, but ignorance is absolutely no excuse because it's in you. You just been taught differently and you're reacting differently. And to me, that's the worst kind of devil. So when these brothers did this, I don't think it was four men. I can't really want to speak too much on the on the, the situation, even though they are incarcerated and stuff like that. I just want to respect both sides of the family and stuff as well. But, you know, when I realized that they did that, I know it was a need to, to resurrect the Panther movement here. So when we got with our, 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 our movement, been around since 1996 out of the YTS prison population underneath the five star general, General Taco, Wolverine Shakur, you know what I mean? was formed the Black Rider Liberation Party, new generation Black Panther Party for self-defense because he seen the need to resurrect the Panther movement, especially what was going on in L.A. I'm pretty sure it's something along the lines of what I had to deal with. Something triggered this man to be like, man, listen, I got the education. And once you get the information, once you know, you cannot unknow. So now that he got the information, he got the education behind it, he had the intellectual property. Now we're talking about knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Truth, justice, and equality. We're talking about peace. Prepare for war, but practice peace. Practice peace, but prepare for war, right? So now when you get this information, you realize that you've just been playing the game that your, your open oppressors and your open enemy wanted you to play. You're doing the work for them. And once you realize that, then you start to make a change, right? Because every day that you wake up, Every day that you wake up, you wake up with a choice and you wake up with an opportunity. It's on you whether or not you're going to pay attention to it and follow your divine code that's in your DNA. My brother, Damon Fontroy, you know, that's my personal, you know, doctor, I like to say now, because my brother taught me that. He said, I don't read brain. I read the earth's brain. When you are now paying attention to the supreme mathematics, you pay attention to the mathematics of the world, you can now start to. No longer have to guess. You know who you are. Get your natal chart read. You know who you are. And then you can act accordingly. So now I know I was acting within my divine manner when I picked up the mantle of a panther. So again, he started this in in L.A., you know, the Black Panther Party in 1966. Of course, it was out of Oakland, California with Dr. Hugh P. Newton and Bobby Seale. You know, the five RP to the first panther gone, little Bobby Hutton. You know what I mean? Little Bobby Hutton first to press the button. Shout out to the soldier out there, man. Shout out to shout out to the ancestor. You know what I mean? Big man just passed away not long ago. He actually hit me up on uh shit like right before he passed. You know what I mean? So, man, shout out to him. So again, I knew it was a need because my mother was raised. She raised me. She was she was in the nation of Islam when my brother was around. 
and my brother was born and stuff. I wasn't born into the nation. She had to leave the nation because she helped liberate Asada Shakur. So when my mother joined the movement, you know, the Nation of Islam wasn't really for that because there was a lot of guns that we had to protect uh, our communities with. It was just a different faction that we, we had to pick up, you know, and when you are dealing with an open oppressor who's got weapons, then it's like you got to meet them with that same kind of aggression. We can no longer hold hands in Kumbaya and think that that's going to, you know, stop these people from brutally assassinating us. So we had to fight fire with fire. And my mother, you know, fortunately was exiled out of the nation because of that. So now that I picked it up, I had to, you know, resurrect and get, get my formation correct, uh, get the right people in place. You know what I mean? And everybody has a position to play. When you figure out your position, and this ain't for everybody because everybody want to try to pick up a position that's not meant for them, they set themselves up for failure. Learn your position, learn your role, and play it. Because if your role is not to be the general, making the plays, creating the plays, then that's just not for you. Your role is not the captain to lead the soldiers into battle, you know what I mean, and make sure that the, everything is going accordingly, handing down pos positions and handing down assigning duties and assignments to people, then that's, you're setting yourself up for failure, right? So now with that being said, you know, we, we built a very good thing and a very strong, strong thing, but everything has a shelf life, right? So for me today, we, we did a lot of work. You can do the history on it. Just Google my name, Jelani Sharif. You can see us all out here in Portland, Portland Black Riders. You know, we did things open carry. The very first open carry, uh, the very, very first open carry, um, after, after uh, an oppressive, excuse me, y'all, have to make sure that the lead tap is passed up. Okay, we plugged up, we plugged up, and we're ready to go. So, um, the very first open carry of um, was not long ago after I was, you know, raided by the feds. So, let me back up a little bit. So, a few years ago, we was raided by the Federal Bureau of Investigation for felony in possession of firearms. Uh, by the most grace of the most high, I wasn't home. But unfortunately, my wife and my children had to endure that traumatic experience. So when they had to endure that traumatic experience, they came in with flashbangs, looked like SEAL Team 6 and so forth. You know what I mean? Um, that also was very you know, traumatizing and, you know, usually the feds cross their T's and dot their I's. They got a 98% conviction rate. So, you know, I thought I was going to have to sit down and do some time because of this. Uh, what I will explain, I did have a felony, but I wasn't considered a felon. So by Oregon revised statute 166.270 states, if you have been convicted of one felony that is not a person to person crime and it's 15 years or more, you do not fall underneath the ban of felony possession by state, state law. So this felony, this felony was probably like 20 years old or so forth. Um, so yeah, they came after me for a 20 year old felony, but I knew in my heart that, you know, I, I knew I could not purchase firearms, but I knew that I could be around them. But, you know, they said, once you're a felon, you're always a felon. So I guess they did thought they was going to have a freebie and I wasn't going to do the work, but because, uh, you know, we, we study a, a before, uh, beforehand and we make sure that we are being up on the laws and so forth, I was giving my lawyer, my, my federal attorney, state information. I was giving them information. She tried to get my case sent to state, but they know they couldn't try me, so they didn't pick it up. So when I studied this information in the law, and I have a law dictionary right here, just in case you think it's bull. No, this is information. Knowledge is key. Knowledge is power. If you want power, gain the information, right? So, and shout out to Oya, shout out to Odetta, man, comrade. She gave me that book, and that book has actually got me out of a couple of sticky situations in the courtroom defending myself, because we don't take nothing sitting down, right? So, I'd rather die on my hands and feet. I'd rather die on my feet as a man than on my knees as a coward. So, I'm not taking anything laying down just because that's what you say you want to give me. Ah, oh, just go ahead and take this, and it'll be all right. Now, nah, how about we die, and we figure out a way to get the fuck out of this situation? That's what we're going to do. So, again, when we got into this, we want to make sure that our people is having a positive light, a positive direction, something that they can look forward to and have some hope in these streets because our babies are falling detrimental and it's, it's falling very fast, either to the prison system, they're falling to death, or they fall into something else that society is telling them that they have to be that's unnatural to their divine manner, all right? So, 
again, we picked up the mantle. We, 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 we start pushing a hard line. And then, of course, with repression breeds resistance. Resistance breeds oppression. So now I have to face that oppression, you know. And it was kind of crazy for me because I actually was kind of excited to sit in front of the federal bureau, you know, FBI agents, lead agents uh, on the case of Portland police. Uh, I'm not sure what he did with the with the FBI, but and they had the federal prosecutor. Now, I didn't know this federal prosecutor was the actual joint terrorist task force. Right. And I'm like, damn, terrorists. What, what where was terrorism inside my discovery? All my discovery, if you don't know what discovery is, is everything that the, the feds will watch you for so long. Three years, I think they said. And the discovery was was pages like this. It was like a book of everything that they had on me. So pictures, my whereabouts. So they was watching me for a while. So, you know, but all the pictures and everything that they had was me with my children, teaching them how to clean firearms, how to do things proper, you know, so they don't go out and become another statistic and think that, oh, I'm going to play with guns because I'm a hitter. And what, what society is, everything is telling them, you know, to get a hit record, go kill some niggas. That's just what it is. You know what I mean? So now... The rappers is teaching our children to go to jail, be hitters and sliders and, you know, go to prison or kill somebody or be killed themselves. And while all wrong, our streams and our value will be put into them and sending their kids to private schools. And then they're going to turn around and talk about prison reform. So I pay his attention to none of that bullshit, you know, because your wisdom is going to teach me about how much knowledge you have. Your wisdom is how much you is how you walk. Your wisdom is how you talk. You know what I mean? Because knowledge is the base of all things. So if knowledge is the base of all things, when we talk about supreme mathematics, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, then that means that knowledge has to be the foundation of everything. Before it is thought about, it has to be, before it is created, it has to be thought about. It's an idea, right? And then it comes into fruition and it's manifested, which is man. Man is mind. Fest is to create. Code the man creates and man creates inside of his mind. All right. Man womb is inside of his mind. What they say is a man's world because man builds the world. And then a woman adds the aesthetics to it. So when we're thinking about these black riders, right? And we're thinking about this movement that we have cultivated and curated and created. We think about total liberation. Then we have to understand that we have, if we want freedom, we have to take it. Nobody's going to give you freedom. Why would you expect your open enemy like Malcolm X said, to teach your children. Why would you expect your open enemy to give you all the dietary supplements that's going to be naturally right for you? Yet we still paying attention to ancestry DNA and not African ancestry DNA. We listening to European doctors telling us what's right for us when technically they're giving you what's right for them. It doesn't belong to you. It's not indigenous medicine. This is all kind of information that you get when you study and you get into the black writers, right? So, Again, the repression brought the feds to my door. Long story short, they didn't have enough to convict me and they dropped it before I even went to trial. So I was going to take it there. You know what I mean? But they ended up having to drop it. They gave me all my guns back. All praises to Allah. They gave me back my my um, body armor. They gave me back uh, everything, bullets and everything, right? So I had to go pick all that stuff up. They get took electronics and all that stuff. So again, when they said terrorist task force, I'm like, I don't know where the terrorism was inside of the, uh, my discovery, but I think that was also a way to get me to a certain kind of prison as well. Maybe ADX. I'm not sure. You know what I mean? So they wanted to get me away from people. And I know that what they did tell me is that they wanted me to get away from firearms. They never asked me anything about the black riders. They never asked me anything about the movement. They wanted to know more about what my dealings was and what Antifa had going on. Maybe because they already had an idea about where today's movement was going. You know, with all the Trump and everything else, they probably already had an idea. You know, and I think they did. But I don't know why they asked me about Antifa. I don't sit down with Antifa. I don't have meetings with Antifa. When I needed them for a certain uh, event that was called Good in the Hood in the KKK, Supposedly, I sent a death threat to the organizer and said it was going to be a bloodbath with um, with snipers and all this extra kind of shit. So, you know, the community, I pull my resources together because that's what I do. I organize just like Chairman Fred Hampton did. You know what I mean? So when I organize that now, they they driving around. Right. They driving. Around, I see the feds. They driving around. They look and they kind of, you know, seeing who who's who's calling the plays here. You know, and then fast forward two years later, I get raided. Not a coincidence. To the date, it's not a coincidence. 
They they probably orchestrated that KKK threat because they, the FBI said they authenticated this threat that was in this paper, this this uh, handwritten note or some kind of note that was sent to the organizer. The FBI said they authenticated that it was real. So they was there. So the organizers had a meeting with the police because, of course, to get city permits, you got to deal with the, the police and shit, shit like that. So I had to sit down uh, with the organizers in the event because we were running security. They wanted us to run security. So... And wanted the chance for the community to run security and a chance for us to secure our own and police our own. So with that, we had to sit down. They asked us, what did we want? I didn't speak. One of my other comrades, uh, shout out to Clarky, shout out to Thrax, man. I love you, brother. Um, my good brother said that you want y'all to stay on the perimeter, stay on the outside and let us control the inside. You know what I mean? We don't we don't want your presence there. We want to be able to police our own. This is an opportunity for us to do this. And we had bloods outside. We had crips outside. We had every neighborhood. We had our young boys in check. If they was to get out of line with each other, it's going to be some checking. You know what I mean? Because man can check man. Woman can't really check man. You can try to tap into that divine nature, but it takes for a man to check a man. You know what I'm saying? And to put him in his correct divine masculine um, source and energy, right? So we just need some to redirection. And that's what us men need to do with our young, our young soldiers. So fast forward, that's when I got the raid and, the, and so forth. And, you know, everything after that, even after that raid, we still got out there. Once I got my guns back, then I got my concealed weapons permit, got everything expunged and so forth. Because remember, I did have a felony, but I wasn't considered a felon. So I got my gun license. I got everything done. Got I got my whole stuff straight. I don't have even have an arrest record right now. So all praises to Allah, you know what I mean, that I got all that stuff cleared away. You know what I mean? So when now they have to try to come against me, now I'm, I'm supplying jobs. I am feeding and fueling the economy because once again, you got to learn to play the game. America is a corporation. It's not a country. America is for sale. So if you don't learn how to leverage yourself and find leverage in yourself and you cut out the middleman i don't want nobody to even be able to talk to these um so-called uh people is that that i have to deal with i'm the person that they got to deal with that way when they something go wrong you realize that you losing valuable value because i'm valuable right so when we're dealing with this it's like we have to understand that you know this is a this is a game to be played Right. So now you learn to play the game. So now when you come at me, you got to go against the state. You got to go against a, a business. You got to go against a lot of other stuff. Now, even with that being said, now because I have a business, every firearm that I get is now a write off. Everything that I get because I got to go train people and bullets and ammo is now a write off. My vehicle can be used to take people 50 percent of the, you know, 80 percent of the the. The 60%, I think, uh, of the, my vehicle usage is for business. So now my vehicle can be a write off. So. We we have to really be more cautious and conscious and, and aware of that, right? So again, now let's let's talk about some people why some people left. First, let's talk about why some people sign up. And I have this book here, right? That that's guerrilla warfare, and it tells you why people sign up for certain things. Take a sip of this green juice for y'all. Take a little quick little break. Y'all smoke. Y'all drink. Y'all chill out with me. Yeah. So some reasons why people sign up to um, to join and their motivating factors of joining uh, a guerrilla, a guerrilla unit, because that's what we are. Um, definition of unconventional warfare. Unconventional warfare consists of the inherited fields of guerrilla warfare, evasion and escape and subvision, subversion, I'm sorry, against hostile states, resistance. Unconventional warfare operations are conducted in enemy or enemy controlled territory by predominantly indigenous personnel, usually supported and directed in a varying degree by an external source. Right. So let's talk about some reason why people turn up. Uh, let's see here. The motivation. Motivation. Why people sign up. Uh, let's see. Besides the geographical, cultural, environmental influence, guerrilla warfare, the sociological climate produces many motivating factors which have profound effects on the resistance movement. Strong individuals, motivation is essential to the formation of a resistance force. 
Although some individuals' motives are ideal and if openly expressed may harm to the guerrilla effort, the following are examples of what some of the true motives may be. Ideology. A guerrilla unit, some individuals have developed strong ideological, uh, ideological motives for taking up arms. These ideologies root in two broad areas, politics and religion. The individual tends to subordinate his own personality to these ideologies and works constantly and solely for the cause. In some resistance fighters, this motive is extremely strong. So your ideology, for me, my ideology, that was my ideology. I wanted to be for the cause, for the people. We are because I am, I am because we are. I want for my brother what I want for myself. I want for my sister what I want for myself. I wholeheartedly believed in what I was doing, right? It was no other deciding factors for me. I didn't want to dress up to look cute. I didn't want to put on a uniform to look cute. I didn't want to put on a uniform to get women. I didn't want to impress nobody. I wanted to get out there and put my boots to the ground. You hear what I'm saying? Now, let's go to one of these. I'm going to talk about this right here. Personal gain. Personal gain is the motivating force for some volunteers. An individual so motivated may change sides if he believes he can gain more by fighting for the opposing force. Ooh. Oh, I know y'all hear that one. May change sides if you believe that he can gain more by joining the opposing force. So now you got people who are just want personal gain. They want to see their way up. Again, some people want to look at the leadership and they want that spot. They don't want to work for it. They just want it for the looks. They want it for the power. You hear what I'm saying? So now you are setting yourself up for failure when you are adding these kind of peoples to your ranks. So now you got to be careful about these people because you're going to see jealousy. All my revolutionaries, all my leaders out there, my berates, uh, you know, all my lions, all my riders, all my new Black Panther Party, uh, every, all the Panther Cubs, everybody. When you are catching people who have a personal gang like William O'Neill, may he rest in piss for setting up Fred Hampton. His personal gain, his own personal gain, he chose to join the FBI. He made it to the leadership, the head of Fred Hampton security. And because he was facing some bullshit ass charges, he didn't want to do no jail time. So for personal gain, he chose to join the, oppos the opposing side. These things happen. That's called an informant. Remember I told you one out of every three was an informant. Uh, now, ego, personal motives such as power, pride, and adventure operate to some extent in all individuals, depending upon the moral fiber of that individual. These motives may sustain him in times of great stress. Fear, some individuals become a part of the resistance movement through no personal desire of their own. They join the movement out of fear of reprisal against themselves or their families. Economics. Many individuals join the resistance movement to keep from starving or keep from losing their livelihood. And in an organized resistance force may exert economic influence on individuals who fail to support the movement. Hate. People who have lost loved ones due to the enemy actions may fight against the enemy as a result of in, uh, enraged hatred. Uncontrolled hatred can pose problems for the sponsor because it's difficult to curb the fa uh, fantasization uh, of such individuals and properly direct their efforts. So you see, there's a lot of different ways and different things that people can sign up for and want to join the movement. You just got to have the right mind. You got to have the right attitude behind you. And you have to know what people are signing up for. That way you can be better prepared. You can be better prepared for what's to come above and come, come ahead. You know, because these, these, these times are real different, man. These times are real, real different. And if you are not paying attention 
to what you are signing up, then you are setting yourself up and you're setting your cadre up and you setting your chapter up for failure. You got to understand when people in the family, you should be looked at as family, don't have the same code of conduct as you. They're not going against this. They're not following the same code as you. And people go against that code and they go against that family structure. Then you got to let them go. They got to go. So now that we're talking about people that have to go, there's a lot of people that have to go in this chapter. And I'm going to tell you, like, again, men deal with should be with the masculine energy is dealing with rational, mathematical, and we should leave the emotional and ego out of things. So now imagine this. We had a comrade that left because I was doing massage therapy. That's something that I went to school for. Right now, the school until. Kicked me out because I missed a few days, but come to find out that they went under and got sued into a class action lawsuit because they was putting low income people into high interest loans to pay off their mother college, which is Corinthians. So when Everest College went out of business, I also got kicked out of school. They were knocking on the door, ringing my phone for some money, send you the collections and so forth. So I got discouraged, sold my table, did all this extra stuff, right? Fast forward, now I'm seeing this, this pre-Instagram. Now I'm seeing Instagram and it's like, you know, people are doing massages with music behind it. There's technology now. Your phone is a six-figure income. So now you can turn, you know, upload your videos, put some music behind it, edit it, make it look cool. And now this is a marketing thing. So now we have one individual who's like, man, I went to school for massage therapy. His woman was a massage therapist or is a massage therapist and so forth. So now they mad because I don't have a license. Now imagine me giving a fuck about a white man's license when I try to do it the right way and they fuck me out of some money in, in, in the long run. And this man was dealing out of all emotion. A lot of men was dealing, that man was dealing out of emotional aspect. He was dealing with, it way too tapped in into his feminine energy. He was acting very much like a female. No disrespect to the to the mat to the female energy. It is definitely it's definitely no disrespect to the female energy. But a male has a masculine and he has a feminine side, right? But men should be dealing with the masculine side of things. And nobody's going to cor correct me and, and and convince me that we should be dealing with the feminine aspect. When we deal with our feminine aspect, that's when we lay down with our our wisdom. That's when we with our children. That's when we get the, the softer side of us. But other than that, we should be dealing with things logically, mathematically, and rationally, right? If the woman is going off in the park a lot, getting in the fight because she's emotional, it takes for the man to think right, start thinking like this might be a problem. This could be the potential outcome because that's how we think. So imagine me letting this man who don't even do massage therapy does a whole construction something tell me about what I is that I should be doing. And he's getting mad at me about, and he's letting his woman control him. Woman's going off the handle on, online and everything else. Like that ain't something that we deal with as men. And if you can't control, and I mean control by physically controlling your woman. What I mean by control is that out of respect, because see, you don't have respect she don't have your respect as a man if you cannot subside that woman from lashing out and doing certain things. You Then you definitely don't have my respect as a man. And by all means, we're not in the same cipher anymore. So you can go. And we don't have to ever speak ever in life again because now I'm very cautious and very particular and I'm very aware about my surroundings and the people that I'm going to have around me and inside of my cipher, zero being cipher, the completion of all things, right? And now I know the difference between friends and family or friends and friends and acquaintances, family and relatives. So we got to know where to put these people in the right category. So again, imagine me going through somebody's college. I need a degree with all this stuff that when information is readily accessible and we probably was the one, I'm pretty sure we was the ones that created massage therapy. It wasn't a white man. Again, they hijacked something, put a stamp on it, put some monetary gain on it. America is a corporation. It's for sale. Now you got to pay us to get this license, pay us to do this shit that y'all people probably fucking created. So imagine me letting a motherfucker tell me about what it is that I need to be doing and should be doing because of a piece of paper. A piece of paper that means absolutely fucking nothing to me besides some people. I'm looking out for you. No, you're not looking out for me. You're not looking out for me. You only give a fuck about that piece of paper because that's what the white man told you that you fucking need. Because I've been doing it this far. Nor did you give a fuck that the white man fucked me out of some money and tried to get me out of some money. So we're not doing that. Don't need you in my cipher. Another comrade that we had was mad that I was doing TikToks. Like, what does TikTok have to do with? I was using that if I got to explain it to you. I was doing that because that's 
diversifying my portfolio. I was getting paid because of TikTok. And if that was my release, that was my therapy, what the fuck does that have to do with you? So, I mean, it's not by all means, you are your own man. You can leave and you can, you know, but make sure it's like a righteous thing, though, because right now it's look like a whole bunch of men that's not men. You're not you're not man. You're not masculine. You have the body of a man, but you have the emotionalism of a of a of a female. You have the brain of a female. Your mind and capacity and thinking and rationalization and rationale is of that of a female. Because everything that you're telling me is not of masculine thinking, rationalized thinking. It's off of emotion. I feel like you shouldn't be doing TikTok. Well, I feel like it's none of your fucking business. I feel like you should get your license to do massage. I feel like it's none of your fucking business. Hold the fucking line. We're not here to fucking dictate whether or not your captain is doing massage therapy or, or fucking TikToks to make sure that his family is eating. We're here to make sure that we are standing the line and holding the line for our fucking community and being that of what our women can now qualify as men to be as protectors, givers, providers, and educators and leaders, thought leaders. But no, we don't want to do that. We want to start really getting emotional and in getting into our feelings. And that's just kind of like where the line stopped. That's where the buck stopped for us. You know what I'm saying? Now, it's funny to me that all the women that's in here held the line. They all held the line in the round, even if we're not active, because we haven't been active because the captain chose to go a different route. I don't have to be out in the forefront and in the front line for people who don't appreciate it. At this particular moment in time in life, the best thing and revolutionary thing that you could do is provide jobs and opportunities. And you provide situations and for people to interact with those opportunities. So if you ain't learning about crypto, you're not learning about finances, you're not learning about the economic structure and what things need to be doing. You're not being able to, to create jobs and LLCs to provide jobs. You're not teaching people to get life insurance, create LLCs and put it inside of a trust so that it can be protected then you're doing yourself and you're doing your family and you're doing your community a disservice because it's a whole thing. People can march hands. I'm in Portland, Oregon. So all this movement with marching and holding hands with no solutions, that ain't for me. We don't have to do that. So just because we're not active does not mean that we have to compete, one, with another chapter, two, with another goddamn cadre, three, with anybody. The only competition that you should be in competition with is yourself. Are you studying? And if you're not studying, you're not a panther. I'm just going to put that out there. If you're not studying and you don't take your studies correctly, you don't believe that you should be studying, that you don't even know what you're fighting for. And you turn around, become an oppressor. Or you turn around and you really start to looking like a person that just want to be dressing up, putting on, the out, putting on a uniform and being out in the forefront because you want to be seen. That's not what we do. I'm not risking my life standing next to somebody who wants to fucking be seen. That just ain't going to fly. So again, you have to know for personal gain, ego, what are they doing it? What are their personal motives for signing up? What are their personal motives for signing up? Is your ego person, uh, person motives such as power, pride, adventure operate to some extent in all individuals, depending upon the moral fiber of the individual. These motives may sustain him in times of great stress. So what is your motives for signing up? That's one thing everybody should be asking. Anybody who wants to sign up for their cadre, what is your motives? What is the history? What do you know about the chapter? Then if you would tell you, well, my, my brother died yesterday, so I'm mad. And then it's probably somebody you got to guide slowly through it. Because right now they're just very emotional and turn around next week and they're not there. They're not, not emotional anymore about it anymore. anymore. Personal gain. Oh, man, I always wanted to be. I always wanted to be. I always wanted to be. My father was my father. My, my, my. It's all about what you want to do, right? That's individualism and not nationalism. You telling me what you want to do or what your father did. I, I, I. That means that when you get in, it's going to be about you, 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 and not the collective as a unit and as a whole. So when you think about things like this, you have to start very fine tuning these people. It should be a process. It should always be a process, right? And make sure that process is thorough. Sometimes you got to guide them. Sometimes you might need a sponsor. Like this person can't get in. We ain't even accepting nobody unless you personally know them and you vet for them. That way, when it comes into, into problems, you're going to be held responsible for them. 
you're going to be held accountable for them because you're his sponsor. So now it's on you to properly get that person caught up to speed about who we are and what we are about. Right. That saves the time. That saves time. You start delegating jobs. Right. That way that the leader can do what the leader needs to do. Lead. Right. So we have to be very cautious of these things, man. And by all means, never let somebody tell you what it is that you need to be doing unless it's coming from a higher up. OK, we have three days. You can't take it in three days. You got a problem. Then you take it to a higher rank. Have a grievance officer. Somebody that the, the people who's in the cadre, if they have problems, they can they can take it to a grievance. And if they have a problem with the higher up, they can take it to another person higher up than them. It should be ran like that. That's how families are ran. That's how businesses are ran. And any, any military structure is ran. See, I've been bred and brought up by military person, by militant men all my life. My grand, my uncles and everybody was in the military. So my mother was in the Nation of Islam. My brother had me drilling. So I always knew what it would look like to be a man, right? But I'm not ashamed to say that I was raised by a single parent mother. So I also do have the feminine qualities and I do have my, my, you know, my, my, I'm in touch with my feminine side as well, my divine feminine side, because I know that's a part of me, right? So I'm not too macho to say that, but that doesn't take away from any of my masculinity as well. You know what I'm saying? In fact, I think it's probably brave that I actually do talk about it. And I am in tune with it. So when we are thinking about guerrilla warfare, you got to make sure that the people that's riding with you. People that are doing things, what is their respect? What is their code? What is their personal code? Do their personal code carry over into what your code of conduct is and your rules of discipline is inside your cadre? Do you have these things set forth to where you are actually enforcing and pushing these things? You know what I mean? And then from there, you start vetting them out. Send them on little missions here and there. Create little missions. Tell them that they're going to pick up a hammer. They don't know what they're doing. It's in the park by some gang members. And the gang members might be, you know, you, they already know what's going on and they start pressing them just to see what the fuck they do. But they think they're going to go pick up a strap, they think picking up something, you know what I mean? But it's an actual real hammer in there. But you just want to test, like, what are they going to do when certain situations cause for things to happen? Are they going to buckle or are they going to fold? You got to know what kind of soldiers you signing, you signing up for your cadre, y'all. So when you are now be a formed a rainbow coalition. Right. It's the Brown Beret. Shout out to Lobo. Shout out to all the soldiers. G, you know, what I mean, Saint. Shout out to all my soldiers over there. Shout out to the Lions. Ramsey, you know, what I mean, with the uh, Palestine movie, with the, uh, the with the Lions and so forth. You know, what I mean, so we are really trying to put together something that is as beautiful as Fred Hampton to put together the Rainbow Coalition. We are a lot of marginalized and oppressed people. And together, we are stronger together than we are separated. Because again, when you are separated and you are divided and you are off balanced, you can be controlled. When things are off balanced and you can be controlled, when there is a man and a woman, that's balance. There's a positive and negative, that's balance. But when things are off balanced, it can be controlled. So what happened with the COINTEL program, they caused confusion, they caused disruption, they caused the imbalance inside the movement and then they controlled the movement. So now if you know this, you know to stay ahead of the game. You know the things to look out for. You should. You should know the things to look out for by now. You know what I mean? Because the things that they've done is already is already been done. Now they got Cointel 2.0, which is what the black something. I forgot. Black, black something. But I was a target of it. And shout out to my brother uh Rakim Belagoon. Uh he was a part of it. He was the first person to get. Uh, and I didn't have to do some jail time for the black. I can't, I can't remember. I'm, I'm going to come up to it. I promise you, I'll remember it a little bit. But he was the first person to get attacked by that. And um, I was the second. And we both beat the cases. He just unfortunately had to fight his eight months inside the Federal Bureau of uh, Prison Industrial Complex. I got to fight mine outside. But I was always in contact with my brother, uh, stepping away. And he got me in contact with some people as well. So shout out to him. And I love you for that, brother. Uh, so... Yeah, man, when, when we are when we are dealing with the revolution and this is how things are going, you have to make sure that you are lining things up accordingly to make sure that you are safe. Your people is safe because as a captain, your very first and foremost thing is to keep your cadre safe. You keep your cadre safe. It keeps your chapter safe. Keep your chapter safe. It keeps the whole program safe, keeps the party safe. All right. 
There wasn't no cell phones. There wasn't no internet back then. They wasn't dealing with the things that we're dealing with. So we also deal with our elders. You know, we still got Kent Ford out here. So shout out to Elder Kent Ford. That's our Huey P. Newton. I'm still in contact with my elder. I still get advice from him, still talk to him. You know, Elaine Brown, um, we ran security for the for um, uh, Aaron Dixon, for the Dixon brothers in Seattle for their 50th anniversary of the Black Panther Party out in Little Africa in Seattle or Tacoma. So we ran out there, you know what I mean? So we, we be of service. So if you're going to be of service, be of service to the people, but don't be used. You're not toy soldiers. You're not security guards. Don't be used. Don't you're not calling the Panthers. There's been a lot of time people say call the Panthers and we need security for a march. What you mean you need security for a march? It's two thousand of y'all. So you want 10, 12, 13 people to secure a thousand of y'all? You are out, you outnumber your oppressors. And we the ones that's gonna get fucked with and get blamed for shit. No, we're not security guards for you. Don't we're not doing that. We show up when it's very needed and we pick and choose when we show up to shit. And I don't care about how nobody feel about it because at the end of the day, my job is to protect my comrades and protect this party. That's it. So I appreciate y'all more than y'all hate y'all black selves. And we're going to tap in.